Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to uh, explain what Yates correction is, and then I'm going to apply it to some data very quickly, and then I'm going to present some Monte Carlo simulation research that's been published that demonstrates that the correction is way too conservative and that no one should probably ever use it. So here's the Yates correction for con continuity. Both uh, I'm going to mention why it's used. Both Pearson's and McNamara's chi-square have been argued to be biased upwards in the 2x2 two two contingency table case. So in any 2x2 two two table analysis that uses Pearson's or McNamara's chi-square, theoretically, you should be using Yates' correction for continuity. And the reason is that there's an upward bias due to the fact that data from a 2x2 two two contingency table uh, is dichotomous in nature while the statistical chi-square distribution is continuous in nature. And so to correct for that fundamental difference, people should be using the Yates correction, theoretically. So to correct for that upward bias, Yates correction should be applied. So what is this Yates correction? It's literally simply subtracting 0.5 from the absolute difference between the expected and observed frequencies. I have another video that goes through these step-by-step -step calculations in a 2x2 two -two table, and I encourage you to view that if you're not sure about uh, those calculations. So I'm not going to go into too many details about that. But that's basically what it is. It's subtracting 0.5 from the absolute difference between the observed and expected frequencies. Here's the formula. Basically, the Pearson chi-square formula is this part of the formula, but it excludes this negative 0.5 portion. So by including the 0.5 portion, you're applying Yates correction. Here's an example, and this is a Pearson chi-square. So in this case, 223 was the observed frequencies, and then 218.88 were the expected frequencies. So we subtract that, the absolute difference, and then we subtract 0.5 from that. And then we can square and then divide. Again, I have another video that goes through these calculations. But well, we do that for each of the four cells within the 2x2 uh, two two table. And for a Pearson chi-square, it's always four cells. With McNamara, it's only two cells. Uh, so then we um, sum those um, absolute differences that are divided by the expected frequencies. And then we get a value of 14 point... Uh, uh, not a value of 14.89, but that's the value that corresponds with that one there. Well, actually, it's probably with this one here, 14.89. But we ultimately, after we sum across all four cells, we get a value of 17.01. So that's a Pearson chi-square with Yates correction. And I'll point out that without the Yates correction, we get a chi-square value of 22.02. So that's a pretty big difference. And this is where I'm going to make a comment about why it should never be used, despite the fact that you see it almost everywhere in textbooks and stats programs like SPSS almost force you to use it because uh, it won't even uh, produce the uncorrected Pearson chi-square value or the McNamara chi-square value except in uh, unusual circumstances. It's because there's a large amount of Monte Carlo simulation research that has found the correction to be way too strict. And here's an example. Thompson, in a paper published in 1988, did a simulation study uh, and if you don't know what a Monte Carlo study is, maybe I'll make another video about that, but it's a way that we analyze the robustness of statistical analyses. That's one use of them. And what Thompson did is that he analyzed data that he knew had a 5% type 1 error rate, so an alpha equal 0 0.05. He generated the data to make sure that they had a 5% uh, type 1 error rate in the data. And that's what the chi-square analysis should have identified. And lar in large part, that's exactly what it found. In the uncorrected Pearson chi-square case, for a sample size of 8, which is very small, uh, an average chi-square value, an average uh, type 1 error rate of 6.6 .6 was found. We were, you would expect exactly 5, uh, but he found 6.6, .6, which isn't that bad. And then when the sample size is up to 400, the alpha rate, the type 1 error rate, comes out pretty close to what you expect. But when you actually compare it against the corrected version, this is a Yates correction, Pearson chi-square, for the same data, sample size of 8, the alpha rate, uh, the type 1 error rate, drops to 0 0.6. 0 0.6 is the, alpha, is the type 1 error rate, and that's just way conservative. Even in the sample size of 400 case, it's still below the, the uh, 
5% we would expect. So in my opinion, and there's other research uh, showing uh, th this that corresponds to these type of uh, these results, and I'll put a link underneath this video to uh, my website, the web page, where I have several references to uh, support you if you if you to support you not using Yates correction in your own research. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll catch you next time.